What is your role model when it comes to design and personal computing? I'm with Slinger and Rick Dickinson. But what about Steve Jobs? He's not my, one of my role models. Steve Jobs was a poser who couldn't code, right? <sighs> Welcome, uh, Paul Roney. Thank you for taking this interview. You have raised $3.7 million for Cosmic. Imagine I was a VC. Yeah. You know, try to explain the product as if you're speaking to a five-year-old who's hyped up about AI. It's a web browser that's plugged into a spatial canvas, so most of your work can be integrated and you don't have to switch between your apps all day long. All I don't long. have to press Command. Uh, command Tab, yeah. So we have a lot of students that are using Cosmic, for example. Students don't have a lot of money. Yeah. Let's not talk about students. The, the branch of computing history we're mainly interested in is the history of hypertext. Hypertext is a concept that was introduced by Ted Nelson and Doug Engelbart in the 60s. And he was like, this is the kind of file system that creative people, professors, students, and any kind of knowledge worker needs. That article itself being based on the work of Van der Bush, who wrote an article about a device called the Memex in 1945, saying we need a machine that allows us to cross-reference the different parts of our knowledge bases. All of that work became then, I would say, the basis of the Xerox Spark work. And that's where the, the desktop metaphor got invented. It's just an environment above a very interesting, very weird project called Smalltalk. And the desktop metaphor of the park became the basis of the desktop metaphor of the Mac. So your startup is based on some article from the 60s. We couldn't make the Cosmic app work on Windows. We had right, to let's not talk about Windows here. Yeah. We're being on serious products. What was your main task in the early days? So in the early days, I was mainly doing, I would say, product design. Design? I, I was doing the design of what the user. What did you design? The user interface, of course. The user interface. <laughs> I think I have some wrong information here because it says you're the co-founder. I am the co-founder. Mike, I'm the, I'm the product designer and the co-founder, and my other co-founder is the CTO. So basically, so I was doing you the. You studied design, not computer science. I studied philosophy. Philosophy. In your free time, do you also paint and read about art history? I don't know how to draw well. Super bad at drawing. So you are the designer. You don't know how to draw. I can use Figma. These are some of the graphics I found on your Twitter. Yeah. You have two thousand one hundred and thirty-five followers. Can you explain Cosmic a bit more? We have a database that stores not files, but objects that float in that database. And we connect them together with links, transclusion links, which is one of Ted Nelson's core technologies. We are trying to create a model of his vision. Are you some sort of favorite startup from Ted Nelson? I don't know if he likes what we do that much, because we compromised a lot to, a, to, to produce something that you can install on your computer. This if he likes it, which we don't know, should have been this from the get-go. In 1960, he was already wa you know, warning people of the evil of a, a nested file folder. Let's talk about more about your actual speciality, design. Why is design necessary at all? The goal of design is to sit between art and mass production. How do we, in a mechanized, um, world, make sure that the machines and the tools of everyday life keep getting better, are still, you know, are designed with the people in mind. Isn't design more like fashion? One year it's this. It shouldn't. The other it's this. Good design is timeless. Do you know this design? Oh, the rabbit, yeah. So as an object, I love it because um, I think we need more colors. If you look at computers right now, for example, they're surgical. They're in metal, they're extremely precise, they're machined. And also the wheel, like having new interactions, paradigms, is something that I'm very interested in. The first companies to have designed personal computers, to have hired an industrial designer, to have said we need to make computers smaller, cheaper, is Sinclair. It's a company from the UK. Apple came only second. Steve Jobs was a poser who couldn't code, right? I think someone that couldn't code wouldn't have created a platform like Next. It's very nuanced. I think he was right on so many things, but also wrong or too extreme on other things. 
I have doubts about a lot of things they did to macOS. I criticize them for a lot of stuff. I think Microsoft has just upped and upped. Paul, I said again, let's not talk about Microsoft. We all know there were other engineers and designers involved in some of the greatest Apple products. What is this, Albert Epstein and Mark Twain? Uh, no, What? it's Hitchcock. And they're, they come from the Think Different campaign. How can Cosmic support the downfall of Google? The, the interesting thing with Cosmic is that we do not... Well, this is going out on the internet. You can be a little bit harder about Google. Yeah, I can be a little bit harder. I, we cannot displace Google with the means we have right now, even with 3.5 millions. Yet. What, yet. Yet. What we see is that we have users that just never close the product, which is exactly what we want. They just... Keep staying addicted. It's... No, not addicted. It's running in the background. Why not? I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a goal I have. Um, But that brings revenue. I think you can have a very healthy revenue stream without addicting people to your product. I hope so, at least. If you want to create a software for creative people and it's not well designed, creative people will not use you. But if you design it for finance people, it could be shitty designed. No, I think it needs to be. So you think art is important because it makes you feel things? I think art is important because it also shows, shows the world, shows our whole species that we can make beautiful things and for the sake of making beautiful things. And it shows that humans can do something else than just, you know, um, brainless production or brainless wars or brainless lots of things. It's very, what I'm saying is very dumb, but basically I think it's, uh, it's, it's awesome to see that people can uh, express something through a medium. It can be music, it can be drawings, it can be paintings. Design is also a form of expression. That's honestly, that's something that I'm uh, uh, very interested in and kind of... Maybe life wasn't about innovating at a fast pace, making the world a better place and building useless SaaS products. Maybe it wasn't about selling instant gratification and Jamba ringtones to malleable people. I knew I had to change my game because making money just wasn't my North Star anymore. Uh, Paul, back to reality. Get the best web unlocking technology in the world. Unlock the web's data with advanced CAPTCHA solvers by sending v4 to brightdata slash gm or scrape Google and Bing without a headache on v3. v2 to stay updated on the free Quinoa coin airdrop now. Send v1 for countless mobile and residential IPs across the globe. And your favorite product? The data marketplace with data from social media to real estate to train your LLMs with v0. You, were, you would end up with a stack of cards that could almost behave like a program. Super marvelous software. Kind of our North, North Star. But a very weird software in terms of commercial success because basically Bill Atkinson said to Apple, either you bundle it with every Mac you sell or I'm out. <laughs>